Oh, okay. So who's talking without a camera? Kyle's talking without a camera. Where's your lovely uh, I murdered her. So, She's dead. Upon the she voice didn't. of on high, Kyle, yes. who has who has no face now. Oh. That's my wife. <laughs> oh, we are actually live. Oh, 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 All right, I thought that was joke. Clitorectomies, clitorectomies. <laughs> We're live, folks. Sorry, it's a mess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for the night off. Can people actually hear you? Okay. Hey, everybody. I am the voiceless uh, voice of Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, <laughs> the voice Barely voice? fitting. You're yes. the faceless voice. <laughs> no, no, I'm the voiceless voice. You can look at my face Fair anytime enough. you want. Uh, anyway, tonight we are doing an amazing show called Between the Rolls. Somebody made it up, and then for some god-awful reason, they decided to have me host the show yet again. It's because I'm amazing. They know it. They just can't have you see my face because the glare from my head will blind you. Anyway, uh, you can this follow is us true. on Twitter. This you is can true. follow us on Twitter. We have YouTube. Uh, I believe no one is wearing our merchandise. That's because... They realize how shoddy it is, and it actually felt. Can ready. I show my thong? Can I show my thong? No, the birch is oh, if the you've got it, wait. Does it actually fill out when it says banana hammock? No, murder hobo ink. I, well, <laughs> I don't I, know I, what I, I'm I was saying. Going to, I was going to say there are three O's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go around the cameras real fast. We'll introduce everybody, starting with I have a face again. Ding, 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 ding. That's the blinding light. <laughs> uh, so let's first introduce Carol. Carol, who are you? You paint mini figurines, and she, she <laughs> lives in Boston. She has an annoying husband who likes to mention in on things. All right, next oh, we have, yeah. and he refuses Scott. to show his dick on what? camera. Are you not? Right, gonna- that's the worst part about the whole thing. Okay, Carol, go ahead and actually introduce yourself. All right, so, for the record, the person that was down here was not my husband. It was our roomie. Whoa. Favorite guys, husband. polygamy is an okay thing. It's a brand new world, guys. You can love whoever and how many people you want. I prefer 17. Just not in Utah. <laughs> I, I, I think you're referring to polyamory and not Polygamy. Which one's polygamy? <laughs> polygamy. Polygamy. Polygamy is multiple marriages. Polyamory right. is multiple partners. Correct. Well, no. Screw polyamory. No one likes that. Polygamy. That's the way to go. <laughs> Make yourself a harem. Anyway, Scott, you were so nice to introduce yourself. We're just going to walk over Carol here. Scott, who are you? What do you do? Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm Scott. Um. I, I'm a I'm a DM and sometimes player, and um, I I I'm eating Girl Scout cookies and drinking um, <laughs> something called Truly Hard Seltzer. Wait, it's not Don Julio. It's not Don Julio. Oh, it's a Tuesday. Oh, I thought we were smoking Girl Scout cookie based on all the giggles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, and last and certainly not least, a man who needs no introduction, so we won't give him any. All right, so uh, interesting. Saturday. Oh wait, Blake. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you, you summed it up. Yeah, awesome. All right, so last Saturday we did a show, uh, uh, the Let's Con This Bitch show, which I guess we're going to call it now. <laughs> which is a show written by our own fantastical, wonderful player DM. Um, shit, I have your name here somewhere. Yep. Uh, Scott. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, yeah, that one. Right. Yeah, that one. <laughs> and Scott is going to be prim- well. I guess it's not premiering it because you're running it here first. It premieres here, <clears throat> but right. you could play it in Gary, Gary Con. Con. Yes, which is Gary in Kong. Minnesota, one of those cold, this frozen places. Is that play no test. Likes. Yeah, it's a right, play, play testing. Premiering at the con. A premiering up play in, test. Up in, up in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. 
So that's, that's uh, where it is. I just think. as a catch up, because we kind of started in the middle, what happened previously leading up to now and what okay. our party is doing? <laughs> so, so, so what we're trying to do is um, do a, do a play test of a module that I'm going to be running in four scenarios, <clears throat> sorry, in four sessions, uh, each session running about four hours long at, at GaryCon. So what I'm trying to do is have a, have a high level play test of what are the good points and bad points and areas that I can improve before I, before I do this module live. So our players here um, have been nice enough uh, to, to uh, accommodate and to help me out in this where we left off prior to last Sunday, uh, last Saturday session was the basic storyline is a fairly linear one in that you have to liberate a town of gnomes from some untold evil. So our heroes have done that. They fought, they did some stuff. Some people died, some people got came back. They heard then of a greater evil as to why this uh, village was overrun by all the undeads. They hear that it's because uh, you know, a, a vampire and various sundry um, servants of this vampire have invaded and taken over habitation of uh, an area. Now they have to finish the job, go to the underground portion, and fight her and the rest of her minions. And so that was what the gist of the um, of the episode on Saturday was going to be about. Was our heroes resting and recovering from the injuries of the prior two sessions? And uh, going underground to try to root out the source of the evil once and for all. Uh, and we'll be doing the conclusion of this next Saturday. So um, please tune in um, and uh, you can see the conclusion of how quickly I can TPK these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Scott, for catching us up. Uh, Kara, yeah, I believe. On 45 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> I have less than that. Carol, uh, this was a new beginning for you because you had died last time and <laughs> you've been raised for the TBK that's going to happen next Saturday. But why don't you fill us in on at least half of what happened? A half of what happened? But this time? Yeah. So Skip uh, all yeah. the boring parts that you're about to mention. Uh, yeah, what, what, <laughs> like I was killed off screen, basically. Again, yeah, I probably would have been a TPK at the end of the second session months ago. Yeah, <laughs> we were in T doo doo. Uh, what happened this time? So basically, we are doing the underground portion of the uh, of the scenario where we had to go in. Let's see, what the heck did we find? We found a whole lot of dead gnomes. Um, and then uh, we had a fight with some, what the, oh, race. That was fun. And then in our infinite wisdom, we decided to split the party. Because, you know, we're smart like that. Good job, Carol. That was you. Oh, that was you. Know it. it was your responsibility to rein me in. and It failed. was. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, yeah, well. There were many, many messages saying, hey, Ren, rein him in make sure we don't split the party and you were just like eh, screw it I, didn't <laughs> yeah, I think you hit it on the head I think that's exactly how she sounded too yeah that too that's pretty much it no, yeah we were no. yelling at her afterwards being like Carol what were you doing you're supposed to babysit Blake she eh, screw it no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> I'll talk back over you. So, anyways, no, that is not what happened. Yes, there were messages that came from a certain Kyle about how I had to grab him and try to drain him in. But before I could do anything, he jumped into the room and started the encounter. And it's like, I get, what do I do now? Kill him. Like, you kill him and drag his corpse back with the rest of the party. Yeah, corpse is a shield. Try yeah. to kill him. I, I, I can resurrect myself, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Rimaraz is in the room. Sure. Because that's what we two triggered. Well, everyone else went the other way. <clears throat> the and, uh, smart way, would you say? Although, although you know, <coughs> I don't think it was a smart way because I know what you were facing and I think it's more 
ex. I believe you were facing your ex girlfriend, Kyle. Whoa. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Drama all over uh, this episode of Between the Roles. She is dead. <laughs> so, it's not going to stop Hawker Brecker any much. <laughs> Oh, wait, uh, a roommate <laughs> and an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> I believe that's what, what you will s- happen. Is Carol pregnant? Will she keep the child? <laughs> Tune in Saturday. <laughs> bom, bom, bom. Or like a candy. Benny cast clothes hanger. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, I, no, no, no. There's something I really do want to get out here, and that okay. is uh, I have to give a big kudos to Blake because... Casting Divine Intervention was, <laughs> and getting the role, that was a very, that was a real long shot, ballsy move that could have just been a wasted turn. I was and, dead if I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, oh, you know, I'm watching, I'm going, oh, shit. And I mean, I've seen, I've seen Fights of Rumors before and they haven't gone well. And you fucked that thing up with that fight. Yeah. fight that that was a miracle and i think actually we two actually have a chance now to at least bugger off but i think we might have a chance to beat them because the little one is not remember it just missed i mean it does not right. have roles like like daddy does so we right. have a fighting chance to actually take it out with just the two of us and i think and we I, left also- off, I think we left off where it can't track me that's correct. That I, and I'll interject here really quickly. Um, and that that was that the divine intervention, and then the uh, invisibility. But then the fly um, helps to defeat the Rimaraz's tremor sense. So that's yeah. that. I think the combination of that may give you an advantage. But um, Kyle, why don't uh, why don't you tell us about your idea of splitting the party and uh, um, running down to the south because you had some intelligence that you knew that there was an exit this way. And um, that, that I think, was the, uh, was the lead that you were following, is that you knew that there was an exit, that maybe this is where if the chieftain and the rest of the gnomes got away, they would be following this path. So what, what was that idea about uh, running down towards the south? And what did you run into? Hey, hey, hey. I'm the host of the show. Thank you very much. Ooh, I'm so now, good. I'm going to tell you, as a player, my idea of running down to the south. <laughs> because I thought of it, and that's what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> what was my question again, Scott? Why <laughs> <laughs> did you split the party, Kyle? I didn't split the party. I was thinking to myself, well, hey. Hawker Brecker has been here before, so he's got to know a little bit. and Maybe he knows uh, where people would end up going, or at least where the royalty was. I mean, sure, they could be up in the prisons or in the guest rooms or something like that, but it's like, eh, no, shit went south. You got to get out of there, and everyone, and I would assume even the poor people had a chance to escape from that way, too. I could be wrong. Now, anyway... I was very successful. I, I believe the river razzes are feasting on the poor. Yeah, they were actually. <laughs> this class warfare must cease. <laughs> anyway, um, I was successful in my job of wrangling the party to become one and cohesive again. And then uh, both Carol and Scott demanded, demanded that I split the party. And to help them out, I absolutely did that. Because it was the right thing to do. And they asked nicely. It was over the private chat. We just made a big show of it to uh, make it seem like I was doing it unintentionally. But the show is entirely scripted, so don't worry about it. <laughs> there, there was never any danger. I'm not supposed to say that. But it, it the opposite. <laughs> oh, oh, I am so sorry. I, I, I'll do better. I promise. This is what happens when you let him run the show? <laughs> <laughs> and we lost Kyle. <laughs> As producer, I, I protest. 
I, I will I will also interject there. The reason that we snuck off, and I, I wasn't trying to do it surreptitiously or surreptitiously, <laughs> uh, because I still had my spirit guardians up, and I was trying to like I, I think relay to you, uh, Scott, when I was leaving, that they should be vis visibly moving along with me because I had right. felt the presence of a non fire based heat source or, or non right. non non ignited. Yeah, so it, it, and, and it was interesting that, that that how the party got split because you, there are some some strong personalities, you know, the the character that you're playing there uh, and this gets back and we, we can wrap up the recap here because because then I'll try to tie it best I can uh, while Kyle is dealing with some technical difficulties um, to how you help to can. <clears throat> yeah, I know what he's doing. But uh, we'll try to tie that to uh, to what our topic tonight is that how do you help in running cons is that one of the things that came out of our prior discussions was how I needed to have probably pre gens and and, you know, how do you build backgrounds for pre generated characters. One thing I did is I made these some fairly strong, you know, characters and that they had backstories, they had histories, they had relationships and inter-party relationships, you know, Hawkbreck and Fleming, two of the players, had a very long, you know, you know, friendship that had gone on for, for a had long no, time. I had no ties to any of you, so do You had no ties to anyone, but you had, you had a very strong quest-type mentality to rid the world of, of, uh, of evil or your, your perceived idea of what evil could be, so you were also driven in your, in your efforts to, uh, to, uh, uh, for your quest and, and, and your mission. So, um, you know, so, so you had some strong personalities, you had some strong individual um, things that, um, that the characters were trying to do and, and you guys as players role play those correct. But it ended up being then that the party got split. Uh, and now you're faced where, you know, the CRs of these, you know, are, are going to be challenging for the for the players to be able to to be able to, uh, to surpass them, but it does get to the point of how do you effectively construct a party if when you're a DM and how do cons basically work in general when you're looking at pre-generated characters or non-pre-generated characters? How do you you know construct those? So that's our topic. Moving away from the recap of of basically how do you construct cons. And um, how do you construct a scenario, uh, the time frame, and then understanding group composition? Uh, so until Kyle comes back, why don't we start off with you, Carol, since we keep talking back over you and such as that. And we all enjoy doing that so much. What are your thoughts? Because you've been to quite a few cons, and I have not. This would be my this will be my first con uh, that I've been to probably since I was like nine years old. So. Um, uh, and the con I went to is in Odessa, Texas, so it doesn't really count. Um, if any of you have ever been to Odessa, Texas, you know exactly what I mean. Uh, so um, what are your thoughts about about how cons work if you're a DM versus a player when it comes to the topic of scenario construction? If you were a player, how what type of scenarios do you like playing in? If you're a DM, how would you how would you prepare for constructing a scenario? Oh God, that's a long question. Jeez. Um, yeah, you have forty-five break seconds. Break it down. <laughs> I was gonna say break it down in the park. Define Western history. Explain your answer. <laughs> Go. <laughs> uh, I don't know which thing do you want first. There's if a you're a player, what type of scenarios do you like playing in? Linear or sandbox? Um, definitely linear. Uh, when there's a time crunch, I think linear helps keep us all on track. Um, and most, if you actually look, I mean, I don't write a lot. I, basically, I go when I run Pathfinder for Pathfinder Society. So there are all the, the scenarios that Paizo sells, uh, specifically for organized play. I've written a couple, but not to, My husband is the one who actually does. He, we're going to total confusion in a couple weeks. And uh, he actually is going to be running six games that he's writing up still right now. I think I think he's creating the characters in them all too. Um, 
but yeah, basically, um, but linear always seems, does seem to work better. I mean, I, I remember there's been a couple of Pathfinder ones that were more sandboxy and the poor GMs, you know, we have to flip all over the place. It just, it just, it's a lot harder for the GM to run, uh, in my opinion. I didn't mind playing it. I had a lot of fun with it, but it was basically where you had like a number of options. You could, you had to hit all the options, but the order you did in, did them in didn't matter. Um, the same. As a GM, I definitely like to I like it better. So some of the things the Pathfinder Society they do they have like um, they have like quests or series of quests that will make up a scenario and you can run them in any order. And usually, pretty much every single time, I just run them in the order they are presented in. In the scenario, so and everybody pretty much is my players seem to all be for that too. So, you know, they That's don't have a preference. So it seems like linear is better mm -hmm. and more desirable. So, Blake, um, ha have I don't I don't know about your experience with going to cons and such. Zero. So I have zero. zero. Uh, oh man, come okay, to so, so 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 let me ask you this question then. If you were going to play, if you were going to go to a con and you were going to play, what are your thoughts about the idea of a tournament style? That is to where you would be given a character and then you would have a set objective to try to, you know, do, do you think this would help party cohesion or not to where you actually could score points by the experience points that you, by the number of monsters that you kill by hitting certain metrics and certain milestones because what i'm going to is gary con which is supposed to be you know kind of an homage to the first uh to the first gen cons and the very first type of things and you had a lot of tournaments right some of the even the one that this was kind of inspired from which was the lost caverns of the soja camp it was a 1978 tournament module and you know there were so you had points and such as that they were being allocated if you were to play at one would, would the idea of actually trying to turn D&D &D into something that you could win for a weekend, how would that appeal to you? I'm, I, I would personally, it would appeal to me, but I'm reminded of when I used to play League of Legends online with nine strangers and how many people were bitching about kill stealing. Mm. I, I think that it, it, as a, almost as opposed to forming a cohesive unit, it would almost more encourage infighting and... Uh, petty uh, uh, murder hobo style play. I was about to say murder hobo ish style play. Yeah, because once 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 you actually say, oh, this is something I can win. Fuck everyone else. This is something I can win. <clears throat> right. Uh, you right. know, it's you, granted. Yes, working cooperatively would will typically get a get... benefit be to your benefit as opposed to your detriment. But there's going to come a time where there can be only one. Right. Um, no, th that's so, true. Hey, Scott. I, I, I... Sorry. Go ahead, talk over me, Carol. <laughs> oh, gosh, Carol, how <laughs> could you? God, what he a just rude talks and talks, Jesus mom. Oh, Christ. shit. No, no, get, get it done. Get Blake at your point. No, 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 no. It was so important <laughs> that you had to interject. Go ahead. There's oh. a relevant point to this, actually, but I'll let you. Okay. Please, I just wanted him to know that I do have something. No, 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 I'm not being bitchy. Go ahead. Are you sure? Yes. I've forgotten what he was going to say because you interrupted. So you have to go now. <laughs> oh, gee, thanks. All right. So actually there is, there are tournament. There's actually a big tournament that goes on. Uh, there's Iron GM, uh, which is a tournament. Um, basically you're given, each GM is given like three things they have to put in a scenario and you get like an hour to write it. And then there are people to come in as players. So you're competing against other GMs um, and the, basically your table will rate you and how well you incorporate the items. And the winner goes to J there's regionals that TotalCon is one of the qualifiers. Congratulations, and you just turned it into rating a TA. <laughs> What's that? Pretty much. You just turned it into a, a, the TA rating system for college. Uh, like rate, rate your teaching I teaching assistant. Maybe. I don't know. I uh, said so all I know is that they're 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 doing the qualifier the qualifiers return to 
to my convention uh, that we had it a couple of weeks, and then there's there's the main tournament at Gen Con. So, so, so I, I guess Carol, what, why I'm saying that, my question yeah. in regards to that is, does do you notice that that tends to encourage more DM pandering? Uh, I don't. I haven't been to it. I just know people who've been in it. I don't think so. That's my, well, if, but if if your if your score is based off of how your players are rating you, hey, give me five stars and I'll give you this Holy Avenger great sword. Hey, exactly. <laughs> I don't think you know, honestly. I don't knowing the GMs that I know that are have been involved in it. They're, they're not steadfast the in there. They're hey, just guys. They're, don't worry. Uh, here's twenty bucks for everyone at the table. Oh no. The pizza. Wow. I just stapled it to the syllabus. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I don't know how exactly the scoring system works, but I do what? know Don Julio. <laughs> but I do know that the, I do know that one of the one of the aspects is that the players do judge the GMs. Okay. So, Kyle, um, yes. well, well real, real quick before we before Sorry. we move on, though, yeah. <clears throat> my other question in regards to the the scenario that you had proposed, Scott, was: is it a how how is that composition? Because it, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of a convention. I'm thinking that's a week long endeavor or weekend long endeavor or at, over several sessions. I was kind of under the impression that you typically switched around and hopped around. So how how are you? Proposing yeah, to I mean, the the when I remember what would happen is that you know you would have everyone that would sign up for the tournament. You know, DMs. You know, obviously they would be rated differently, but it would be the players, and uh, everyone plays the same module, right? So it's a it's a set module, and uh, and then you know you would have the scoring system. Um, you know, you, you can take a look at some of these. Uh, I think the the A series, A one through A four. Uh, you know, Seeger the Slaver Stockade, and some of those. You would actually have like you know, like. Five hit points for killing a hobgoblin. Ten hit points for, for killing a wife. Uh, you know, ten or not hit points, but you know, point your know, tournament points for doing this. And, and all of this was, uh, you know, and then the players, you know, all the players at all the different tables who signed up for the tournament, they would basically count up points about how much gold you would get, how many monsters you killed, and everything else. That was the tournament format. And then, and then in the section in the in the module, um, you know, they would say, you know, hey, if you're not playing a tournament, then play it this way. You know, these areas aren't here. These areas aren't here. Uh, these two secret doors don't exist, etc. So, I, what I was wondering is that if you're a player, you know, um, you know how how because I haven't seen that. I didn't see it. I haven't seen that option, for instance, at Garrity. I don't know if there are any other cons that are like that, and then how would that appeal to a player? So that 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 I, was a I question would, that I put out. I would I would find something like that appealing, and in order to kind of curb the potential issue that I had kind of immediately gone with, make it almost a, a, a team score. Yeah. Okay. Actually, okay, it's team strange score. enough you were introducing <clears throat> that. Uh, I don't know if we had done I. I was dealing with children issues for those of you who are watching this screen and seeing my beautiful face, or maybe not because I destroyed the cameras and everything like that. When I left, uh, mm -hmm. we'd like to thank our wonderful producer. She's not here tonight. So we'll thank Frank instead. <laughs> Hold on, let me adjust the technical issues. <laughs> uh, 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 it was funny you mentioned that because um, uh, in my series of writing one shots lately, one of them that happened to pop up was a convention idea for myself, which was um, uh, uh, what I call it. I called it War and Thieves, but the idea is that um, after Sorry, title, it is. Yeah, I need to <laughs> fix it. That's it's why it's in my no work desire time. to play that whatsoever. <laughs> is, 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 this the, uh, is this the social social scenario that we had kind of been tossing around, Kyle? Mm, no, the one we're tossing on around here. No, the one that you're referring to. Y'all, y'all need to stop tossing off right now, okay? And just, <sighs> oh, just hey, 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 you you don't know where my hands are, and you don't need to know. I actually I do know your hands are, and thank you for oh, putting it there. But but uh, 
But I- anyway, my idea of this uh, scenario was that huge battlefield just took place. Hmm. A lot of people are dead. A lot of famous NPCs, and there's kind of main sites to the battlefield. And what the idea was, if you have four days of convention, you get four different groups, and you tell them, hey, you know, this is a competition. Whoever recovers the most artifacts, the most gold um, from this battlefield is going to be the winner. We'll send you some free dice or something along those lines. But the idea is that you have a cohesive group. They're running through. It's a completely open map, uh, and they choose where they want to go. And they can collect artifacts that are worth this much gold. And however much time they collect in the allotted time is their score, how much gold they earn, which I figure would be a lot easier than saying, well, this is five points, this is five points. Because if you go by gold, you can say run across um, the princess who is looking for her father. And if you recover his corpse and his great sword, she will give you this much money. Meanwhile, right. if you just happen to happen on the corpse of the king and you see this great sword, well, you're only getting this much gold. Right. And right. Okay. good luck selling it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But so I, yeah, no, I've enjoyed the idea and I've thought about it a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can tell. I can tell. So, um, um, uh, you had those technical difficulties. Um, I understand that technical you know, you're having, difficulty. Yeah, with uh, with uh, with that. But where? Um, I think I, I, I just zoomed out there. Okay. So what we were talking about was the first part in the um, <clears throat> in the um, um, uh, topics for what we were thinking uh, we, we, that we could discuss when it comes to cons. And that was, you know, player perspective and. Um, linear versus non-linear versus sandbox and what i thought is that um kyle what 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 were the since this is your this was your topic what was the next thing you wanted to talk about i'll i'll turn it back over to you while you were going uh while you were you did an admirable job scott way better than the douche that was supposed yeah no you you keep going with this honestly because it's your convention you're trying to figure out what you're doing and how to work it and I've completely lost all track of everything going on. To be completely honest with you, so so um, the uh, the the thoughts that I, that I was thinking about is that you know when you're running a con, and uh, since I haven't done this before, um, what I had elected to do, and I wanted to get all your input on this, um, I had four sessions and roughly four hours each session. I think that's a pretty good time, um, and that's a total of 16 hours, and that's just enough to where Gary Connell give me a T-shirt. So that was my whole thought: is that I get a free T-shirt. Just let's let's be honest. I love T-shirts. Swag, as many, swag. It's as many T-shirts as I can get. Swag. Um, <laughs> swag. One of those is the right. I think that's the one. Swag. You're now a Most white weakness. nationalist. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. That's backwards. I'm that is pretty correct. sure that's, that's the symbol for corn. <laughs> <laughs> One of those works. Uh, 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 oh, oh, they're docking. They're docking. What? <laughs> One of them would have to be uncircumcised, Kyle. Oh, um, that's true. One of them would. It's really so, hard um, to do that with your finger, though. It is somewhat hard to do that, period. But um, the, the uh, point being there is that is based on what we've run here so far um six people um roughly 10th level or let, let's let's make this a little more general if you're going to do a uh, a um, um con if you're going to dm a con looking at the composition of it is and you're going to try to run every day is four hours enough time or is it too much time should you try to do it all in like one big six long, or eight hour long mega session, or do you need to break it up into two hours? Worse, four hours just about okay. Four hours is the norm. Four hours is the norm. Two, okay. two, two hour blocks is definitely too short because we accomplished hardly anything. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fair. You do have to consider the fact that most cons have dinner breaks and you know, and lunch breaks, and they will be basically this 
But we still went, I go, it's a four hour block, then an hour off, then another four hour block, then like two hours off for dinner, and then four hour block for the evening. So okay. you do work around things like that too. Because <clears throat> you don't, I mean, and yeah, you want to make sure your running time, you actually, if anything, go a little shorter rather than try not to go over because there's nothing, you know, you need to eat. That is a, that's actually a very important thing at a con. Make sure you eat and drink. Get enough rest, get a shower, and... I imagine they're eating plenty of dick and drinking plenty of semen back at the hotel afterwards. Oh, yeah. I've been yeah, to that con. Pop a cock again. Sandwiches and... I'm talking about Extra sandwiches. Extra man. Yes. I think we're talking about two different types of conventions entirely. Two completely different types of conventions. But uh, on that, so... so I, I we're talking about tonight. Yeah, uh, the uh, the the idea of you know four hours and uh, you know four sessions. What about party size and table size? And I want to get each one of you guys. Um, uh, we'll start with you, Kyle. Based upon what you've seen about the uh, size of the campaign I'm running, and and for what you've seen and talk with other people such as that, is how how many people is too many people and how many people is not enough. I have mine set at six, just to give a point. Is that what I felt, for instance, kind of tying back to the recap, if I had six people, four whites and eight specters, I'm afraid like this is a fear of mine. Oh that, yeah. That one combat could go on for two hours, you know, or maybe an hour and a half and really suck up a whole lot of time. So how do you handle, you know, party size and tables? That is an interesting question. <laughs> and I have an answer for you. And oh, oh no, my kid is back. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, no, um, certainly increasing the size of the table and just how large your encounters are is certainly going to slow down everything, um, which made me think of another uh, thought process. There's a lot of DMs out there who are throw one big bad monster at the party and then they're shocked when it just instantaneously dies in one right, round or something right, like right. that. And so obviously you overcompensate and then you throw a white two warlock, 17 vampires and a demon in there. <laughs> and you run across the other problem, which is okay, now there's so many that everything's kind of bogged down. And I think last time we we were uh, running this, we talked about, you know, either having a set um, initiative for your monsters, or at least pairing them up. All the vampires right. go here, that, or maybe just all the monsters going at once. Another thought is, if you want to have less monsters on the field that you have to carry about, is giving them legendary actions more than what they may already have, or well, yeah more than what they already have. So maybe the Lich, who normally has three legendary actions, give them five or six, and then right. one single Lich can right. go through. And you're just saying, okay, his turn, and the Lich firebolts you. Okay, your turn. All right, and the Lich transforms you into a goat. Right. And, and <laughs> what I'll probably way. do... That, that, that's a good point. What I'll probably do, because what I noticed uh, running for this uh, from the play test we did, and then we'll, and then we'll go to you, Blake, um, is that I'll probably have maybe like one or two specters that get raised up total and have the wraiths as the one as being the, you know, the, uh, the primary big bat, you know, the primary bads in that one encounter, and then only having a specter or two get, get, get raised up. Uh, or maybe even change the dialogue because specters are supposed to be raised by a white only after they've been dead, only a body has been dead for one hour. So I actually thought about maybe having that, you know, that scratching sound that you were hearing be maybe like one small gnome that was still alive and then it dies right there and then that one gnome being raised as a specter. You know, just having that one thing right there in that one event, instead of having six or eight specters coming up that I think can tie down um, hey, and, hey, and, and Scott. fear. Scott. Yeah. Sorry. Um, you actually built a solution to that by the fact that um, if you kill the whites, 
you kill the specter. You kill the specter, yeah. <laughs> so basically, the PCs just have to figure that out because I feel like that combat. They kill was... one white and they're going to be finishing that combat really quick. Sorry, Carol. Exactly. Yeah. So I think in that combat, I would leave it as is. I thought that actually, time wise, went pretty well. I mean, I don't think it went too, too long. Um, okay. You could do too on the fly if you really feel like things are bogging down. Is mess with the hit points, reduce them, sure. make them do you know, make them faster to kill if you feel like it's starting to go too long. You know, that's just what I do. If the combat seems too easy, I'll start stacking on hit points. If it seems like it's going on too long, I'll start taking. I'll just start adding more damage or something. You know, okay. And, and just just for time's sake. Blake, um, what do you think about? I'm sorry. And also, you can't even like if there's like one left, and you know, you know they're going to beat them up. You just say we're done. Yeah, you have to have them finish either, and people right. will be satisfied with that. <laughs> that happens like, a lot. That, I, that that's that's a good point, and I, I have I have used that before just in my just in my table just in my home games. Blake, what are your thoughts about table size and composition? Uh, whenever it comes to how many people are too many people, if you have well, large versus small encounters, especially I, I at think, a con, we have people playing who may not have ever played together before. Right. I, I still would say six is a is a good goal. Uh, is a, is a good enough composition because they're going to be strangers, so they're not going to be they're going to be a little bit more by the books. You know, and they're not going to necessarily be trying to outdo each other necessarily so much, at least in my mind. And and I what I what I was jotting down here is I'm I was uh, putting together what I think like the ideal composition should be. And of those six, I have uh, you need probably either a paladin or a barbarian, uh, right? Either a monk or a rogue. Either a ranger or a druid, a cleric, and a caster, and the other one can be either the fighter or the rogue, whichever one of those you didn't choose. Okay. Okay. Because uh, I think we commented, I don't know if we did it on air or off air, but I know that we did kind of mention that the party composition as it stands right now is a little... melee heavy yeah no it, it, and that's that's indicative of the uh of the uh, module that it came from is that it was melee heavy uh and that's just because the module that that was based on was very very monty hall like it was very very you know open door number one fight monster get loot open door number two fight monster get loot and it was you know it you know, encounter after encounter after encounter after encounter. Oh, very, yeah, very no, melee there's, oriented. There's nothing wrong with that. But but this isn't that module, right? This is not, you know, going into a cavern and, and slaying a monster after every every room that you're going into. I wanted to be able to inject some almost in this part of the underground layer. I almost wanted to put almost like a little bit of, you know, gothic feel to it and a little bit of creepiness. And, you know. I, uh, I think you did, And I think you did a good job uh, in... In, in your setup with that, with just the way that your descriptions of how bloody and how horrid and how just little, I, I'm picturing, I'm picturing the, the, the uh, vampire girlfriend is this little, little girl in a white dress. That's just with, with, with hollow Tucker eyes. Brecker is very, very perverted man. <laughs> I, I, we're, 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 I noticed when I was going through his character sheet, there was you can fuck Andy. <laughs> Well, so then, that's good. I will mention what I put in the chat there. If going for the gothic feel, putting that uh, uh, haunt, and for those in 5th edition who aren't familiar with that, that is a trap that is more supernatural setup. So in this case, the children, the villagers who have trapped themselves in a room and then suddenly are being slaughtered and they're forcing themselves to try to escape puts a psychic impression mm -hmm. that um, affects anyone who goes through that area uh, as a trap. And so I that like might that. be a good way. Plus, there were multitudes of doors in the guest right. room where they could have split off immediately 
as opposed to heading through this big room. And the big room is really the draw, I thought it was anyway. Yeah, no, right. that, that's, yeah. that's a and good I'm, point. And I'm, and I'm curious to see after we resolve the combats exactly how the layout of the rest of this is, because I know you had mentioned that there was that, uh, again, I think this was off screen and I'm not going to really try and ruin it for anything, anyone, but I, you had kind of mentioned that there were some areas that had a history and had a past and that that was currently still in effect on on a yeah on, on those specific areas so that there are still kinds of uh, just not knowing anything about what happened here being able to pick up on the remnants and being able to still get a cohesive story about right uh, you know this is probably where they did their sacrifices this is probably you know where they had their celebrations this is probably where all the innocents were slaughtered so that uh, lucretia borgia could be Stay young forever. Yeah. One I'm second, sorry, guys. That was Elizabeth Bathory, Lucretia Borgia. Was I, I, I'm, I'm doing a quick little thing online. Is it okay, Mom? Not mute himself. Is, is it okay, Mom? Do I have to get off yet? <laughs> you didn't mute yourself. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, um, so one of the things that might be an issue with, because Ideally, when you're running a con convention, you have a reason for doing that. You want to introduce lore. You want to introduce a new game mechanic you came up with. You want to show something that no one's seen. You know, people are paying to go to this con. They want to have something special when they get there, have fun experiences. And so ideally, as a writer, you're trying to introduce that. And right. in your part, I really feel like you're trying to push the lore of Greyhawk. Uh, uh, maybe a bit, yeah. Yeah, well, and I mean, especially by the by the fact that you're revisiting this place so much, you're you're having to tell a story that should have already been told. Mm. Uh, yeah, you're, you're having could, to you're having to fill could, in backstory that's missing. If I could interrupt, that's a good point. Quick though, uh, I, no, I, you're the new Carol. Shut up! I think <laughs> uh, I could mute your ass because I'm sitting in the producer chair. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's a good idea that you're introducing all the old lore because Gen yeah. Con is noted for being a throwback, and I think yeah. you're going to get a lot more players okay. since you're pitching the idea of, "Hey, let's go back to Greyhawk, but in fifth edition." So I, so I, I think yeah, no, I, no, I, and I didn't mean to point that out as a negative in any way. I just. It was more of a of a of a time consumer. Right, it, it it is a time consumer, but it also gets us to our to our last um, to our last topic here before we have to wrap up, and that is um, speaking about you know player and party composition size and how that can slow things up and slow things down. How much lore you introduce can slow things up and slow things down. But at the end of the day. Uh, it is. It is all about the experience, and you, you have know to what have else slow things you down. Have have having a directional microphone. <laughs> Mic drop. Oh, hold on a second. I think I've got some cheering crowds here on that one. You know what? I'll just throw up technical issues. Okay, now we're back to the main screen, everybody. <laughs> I, I don't know if I caught any of that actually. I, I don't know what that meant. But so uh, you know it was slow things down too. having a directional mic. Ah, okay. Okay. Do I That's have when you were talking mic? like this and then and then you were doing this and they're like, oh let me take <laughs> And so this is what's happening. <laughs> and that's why you do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember that. Yes, now I remember that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I need to get one of those. That would be a good idea. <laughs> no, the uh, the uh, last the, the last topic I want to think is that um, what about do you do whenever players don't show up? I mean, how was how was uh, oh. maybe that may be my biggest fear, right? Is that I have six open desks, six, six <laughs> tables, and you're only the way Gary Con is structured is kind of weird. Is that you know they it shouldn't be a fear slots. for you. It shouldn't be a fear for you, Scott. And I mean this not as an insult. I, I mean it as an observation, and more as a compliment than anything. You are very verbose, and you are I a handsome verbose. man. So you know all those wives who are watching their husbands play at different characters are going to turn and be like. Look at that man with a head full of hair. I'll sit at his table. <laughs> you, you, are, you are very good at, at being able to 
weave a story with a lot of environment and yes. be able to fill in gaps should those be able to should those present themselves. I think that well, you're good. perfectly capable of that. Well, I I I, I, I suppose any time you have a you, you have you're hosting something, it's like a, it's like you want to throw a party. You're always worried that no one will, that no one will show up. But um, we'll just make this quick around the table. What what things can a DM do? If you're going to host a con, you're going to have a game. What can they do to try to attract people to their table to come? Blake, let's start with you. Other than Absolutely. having a great set of hair. But why, I'm nips. sorry. Get, get, get cleavage. Have cleavage be a chick. I don't, uh, <laughs> you uh, have no, surgery okay. to do that these days. They, 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 they do. do. Work, you know, just, but, but no, uh, in, in honesty, uh, I would say that... Uh, Especially know know the environment and know the uh, crowd that is already going to be there. Uh, I'm not say, I'm not necessarily saying pander, but it's like what Frank had said that where you're going is it's going to be a group that typically is interested more in a in a lore or a uh, 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 a scenario uh, history heavy laden uh, scenario. Uh, I see. So uh, being able to provide something like that is going to be much more appealing to that group of people than let's say, okay, you're running for fun houses. Okay. Okay. Kyle, what are your thoughts about what a DM can do to help attract people to their table? Understanding uh, that it is a con and it, uh, it is specifically Gary con, but, but just in the broader context as well. Sure. Uh, what I would do is I would make sure I have a good amount of, of uh, murder hobo merchandise. <laughs> and you just have a seat right there and you'll get yourself a free t-shirt, free set of dice. Thanks for joining the game, guys. The, the t-shirt gun is right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good. That's good. I, and, I mean, uh, don't I think... go crazy like that, but there's a bunch of dice yeah. gremlins who would love yet another set of dice. Oh, and okay. you can learn yeah. in that way. Oh, absolutely. The alternative point: Are you attracting the right kind of player? Eh, that's only if nobody shows oh, up. It's a warm. Body. No one signs up. It's like, hey, yeah, fill it in, warm body. I have four people. Let's add two more for the fun of it. Although, some dice. Ding, ling, 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 ling. Exactly. Yeah, understood. Carol, now you have been to uh, to a. Sure, you're about you to go to, to a con. A I was going to say, and speaking as the wife of somebody who constantly said he writes up a lot of his own games, um, first of all, don't sweat it if something doesn't fire, okay? It, it happens to everybody. Um, every GM I know. Something <laughs> of touch. To be fair, he hands out a bunch of free stuff, though. And, and, he yeah, has, but, and he has those seduction but, skills to fall back on. Yeah, but, but Scott, the, the reality is, I mean, oh, I don't know how they do it at Gary Con, but most cons, they basically, you have tickets to your events, and they assign, people will sign up for your games. So right. basically, the number one thing is have a good write-up. Have a good write-up that will draw people in, because that's where you're going to get them. I mean, now, like a total con... We do, although this year, we've actually, it's almost out. Uh, there's not that many tickets left. So, but a lot of times you get a bunch of people at the door who wouldn't sign up for any games. And then, you know, never, don't even give up even, even if you don't see anybody at your table right away. They may be sending people over or whatever. Um, never give up. Because <laughs> that's how yeah. my friend was filling out some of his games. Although this year, pretty much all of his games are completely full, which is incredible. That's great. Um, but yeah, good right. But basically, yeah, you got to get a good write up is your best friend uh, for this. So, and yes, as Blake said, know the type of audience if you can. And I'm going to throw this out there. This is why I don't feel bad because you've never been there. Not a lot of people are going to know you as a GM, but that's the <laughs> thing is, is reputation. Um, over the course of years, you know, people will, you'll get a following, believe it or not of people who will want to come and play your games and they'll eventually and that's a, like just said i remember there were years that some of my husband's games didn't fire and yeah. now it's never a problem it's believe it or not yeah. sometimes it's just it's like everything else you got to build it up you got to so build it up 
But if something that happens and it doesn't fire, don't worry. Don't sweat it. It said it. Don't, don't worry about it too much. It's it is what it is. Go yeah. off and play. If again. no one shows at your game, you go and play at someone else's game. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I, I, would you. Almost, I would almost want to ask you, Scott, because how you attract people is you have to offer something that they can't get from someone yeah. else. So yeah. what yeah. is it that you think? What is it that you think you would you would? Well, you know, I've thought about that. I, I honestly have thought about that. And, and uh, you know, one thing I'm doing, and I don't know if it makes any difference or not, like I said, I'm a total neophyte at this. Um, I am, I'm, I'm driving up there. Um, I'm going to play it. Uh, I've done out all the maps. And so I'm, I'm bringing all of my gear. I have like a nice, I, I'm sure other people are doing this, but I have like a, like a 52 inch you know, flat screen TV. I put oh. into like a little thing. So, so I'm, I'm projecting the maps and then putting the little minis on top of it. So you have like a little box and then, you know, that way people can see the maps and, you know, I have a, so th that's, that's one thing, the thing that I've found out whenever I've done my home games and such that, that has helped quite a bit. You know, people can actually see the maps that they're, that they're going on and uh, have them already all scaled and have a little, little, little fog of war. So you put your, you know, put your, um, your miniatures on top of this, you know, TV that I have that's been encased in, uh, in uh, you know, wood and, uh, you know, you know, polyethylene on top. Good so job. it makes it, it it makes it pretty cool to play. And I'm hoping that that, you know, attracts some, you know, some interest saying, oh, that's 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 cool to play on. And then then, of course, I'm also printing out and I'm going to kind of self-publish the module. Uh, you know, so I'll, I'll be handing out, you know, at the end of the games, I'll be actually handing out a copy of the module as well. So um, I'm hoping that those plus all the great murder hobo ink swag that we'll be giving out at the table. Hey, so so those, are, those are the three things. Yeah. So as an experienced conventioneer, um, who especially like when I go to Gen Con, I'm in that Sagamore. I don't have access to power. There's a lot of cons. You may not have access to power, so that TV screen may not work, huh? May okay. not work. You better check with the con. And I thought of one other thing too. And I know we were, we're talking, oddly enough, we're talking about going on Facebook. I have seen it where, especially for like Total and others, uh, where people will actually get on there and advertise their games. So you know, sign up for this. You know, people will do it. I don't know about Gary Con, but it's a Total Con. I see people advertising their games all the time. In fact, I'll be yeah. having the mini painting table on there right. week. So, and make but, sure you're memorable. Be the guy from Texas. Wear the big ten gallon hand of spurs. <laughs> spurs. Bolo, bolo, hey, bolo, come bolo. play bolo. with me, everybody! I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say. Yosemite. That's Sam. good. I say, I say, you want to play that. this game. I'll say, I'll say, you want to because it's from Texas. I brought yep. some Don Julio. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, Don, it's Don Julio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Kara, that's a really good point about the power. I'm going to have to ask that question and find out. That's a really, really good point. What What happens? Can I bring like a like a 500 foot long extension cord to be okay with that? No, because because I mean, there's only usually there's only limited power outlets. In Get the a room. print out, and you'd have to just ask. unplug people's so, shit <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> You know, I said, I know a lot of the ones I, I go to don't necessarily have. I mean, although, Frank, when you're at Gen Con, I think you, you're you in a room where I think you have easy access to power. Yep. Because you're in a and, room. And I will unplug shit if I need to. Yeah. So, of course. Yes, I mean, have to check and see DM's what the rules, baby. <laughs> Now that's a really, really good point. I hadn't even thought about that. That's a fantastic point. Yeah. Uh, well, it is uh, eight o'clock. Why don't we do final thoughts and we can wrap things up here real quick. So uh, um, attending cons, um, playing in cons and um, composition of parties. Let's give our quick final thoughts. Here. Me? All right. So I didn't actually answer the question about how many people is good. I'll oh, go sorry about that. I'll go, that's okay, because I answered something else within that, that question. So um, I will give you the Pathfinder Society, organized play, their things, because I think actually their, their stipulations are, are really good. Um, they do a minimum of three with a pre-generated character. So basically the GM or one of the players runs a pre-gen, well, 
then again, most all the characters are pre-gen, but with Pathfinder Society, people will bring their own characters in, but it's not quite the same thing for you. But basically, you have somebody playing too, or the GM will play one of the characters as an NPC. And then the max they do is six. I've seen Joe go up to eight. I think one time he went to like 10, but I think that's too many considering the rounds, you know, you don't want right. your rounds. Right, right. So six, six is like the max. And, and the interesting thing is with Pathfinder scenarios nowadays, they start, they figure a thing for four and then they'll add, they'll tell you what to add in if you have five or six people. So they'll actually have, multiple ways of handling it, which I think is a really good idea. Okay. <clears throat> so if you don't, if you, if not everybody shows up, then, you know, you have a plan to not have something right. that's hard to run. Um, that, that, that's good. But, oh, I mean, yeah, I could go, God, I could talk about this all night. This is a, this is a really good topic for me. Cause I, 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 I next person, button. next person, <laughs> mute it, mute it now. I can, I can mute her. I got her. I got her if you want it. <laughs> Scott called the ball. Scott called the ball. <laughs> guys, remember in the movie Airplane and, you know, hit the main character. Going, well, it all started. And, uh, and then there'd be the old lady hanging herself. Guy setting himself on fire. That's one of the great all-time movies. I love it. Have you ever been to a Turkish prison? <laughs> I like films about gladiators. <laughs> You like to hang around the gymnasium. <laughs> Everybody knows why the men's locker room smells the way it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was really good. That was really good. My daddy says you only half ass around the court half. <laughs> you have your dad run Walton up and down the court all night long. <laughs> Shit, Chum don't want to get Chum don't get to help. Chad ass turkey and got no brains in him. <laughs> yeah, it's okay the i speak jive oh man <laughs> that is so good so good uh cream and sugar no i'll have it black like my men <laughs> <laughs> such a great movie i take the wrong weekend to stop sniffing glue <laughs> yes, i picked the wrong week to stop doing it instead of me yeah, what do you make of this? So well, you can make a hat. You can make a nice crochet. Oh, it, it, what's that? It, it, it's a, it's, it's, it flies in the air. It looks like a big Tylenol. <laughs> Mind if we take a few pictures? <laughs> oh, man. Sorry and for that. that's uh, how you do real between the rolls. Yeah. I'll, go, I'll go ahead and interject my final thoughts. Oh, man. I'll go ahead and I would suggest also that you... Uh, Give your 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 players access sufficient access to your pregens ahead of time, uh, especially okay. if you're going to be doing a high enough level uh, like you're doing, where they have to familiarize themselves with everything that those characters are capable of, because otherwise it's going to bog down that first that first <laughs> session. And especially if you have rotating players, where right. they have to relearn that every time, it's it it, it 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 can be a very big time sink if they if they have to continuously <laughs> try and refresh their memories. I hate to say this, Blake, but he's not going to likely know who these players are until they show up to the table. Yeah. So, well, I, I, I'm, I'm just saying in, in as much as that is possible. I, I, I might say I have, you have your character, and then on top of the character sheet is a paragraph that, you know, is, hey, this is the character, ba da 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 you know. This is their backstory. This is the, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But so really do short. That. And I can try to and I can try to stalk who these people are on Twitter and Facebook they and such not, as that. And, they may not. You, you're probably not going to get that. And like total con for protection's sake, they will not tell the GMs who their players are. Oh really? Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, fair so enough. Fair enough. Gonna, if you don't, now, you don't. Now, as a bit of advice in that front, though, figure that out. So you have four hours of running time. Make that part of your make that part of the running time. Give your players like five minutes to go over the sheets. Okay, that's okay. that's how you do it. You just do it at the beginning for like five ten while people roll it, because yeah. you'll get you'll get stragglers. You'll get you know. I I, I guess that's effectively what I meant by ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, not, that, not, I, not, I, that um, makes don't sense. Don't expect them to just go. Dive. I'm sorry, like, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Don't be sorry. No, that, that makes sense. Kyle, Kyle, what were your last thoughts? We'll try to wrap this up here real quick. Uh, not my last thoughts, but on that, you might want to get maybe those spell cards or at least a spell card printout thing. Uh-huh. Because I know we're switching Hockerbrecht from doing a multi-class to being to a, a Valor Bard. Yeah. caster. Yeah. And so that's going to expand a lot of things. More reading. We'll get rid of the sleep spell and the other thing like that. But um, yeah. uh, as far as final thoughts go, um, as I said, when I got back on here was, you know, we all have a reason for running it. Yours is lore. And so when running a lore thing, I'd make sure that every single one of your encounters is towards that lore thing and explaining <clears throat> what happened even afterwards from your okay. encounters. And okay. No, that's a good just point. Keep that that's in mind point. because your players might not look in and read the journal of King Harbachafafafafar. <laughs> But right. when they fight his dead corpse and notice that there's a whole bunch of bite marks and he's part vampire himself or something like that, then, you know, maybe something happened. Well, like one thing I was going to do is that I have like little sections of the module I've written because I actually have all this in PDF and stuff like that. that I'm, mm-hmm. I'm making modifications. I was thinking about printing out handouts. So when the players find a clue or they find a note or they find a scroll or something, actually printing out and say, and you find this. Yes. Right. Love that, and, and and that's a good way to to keep information that's given that that only one character acquires right. to that character. Yeah, I was thinking about doing that, and uh, like I said, I, I I haven't done this before, but I've seen that when I would watch like Critical Role or some of the other things that you know they use props. You know, um, uh, Deborah and Wool uses I, I that. Think, in a lot I think I think more than necessarily as a prop, it is a way to keep information. I, I think it's more of a tension, and, su- yeah. tension okay. and suspense element. But I like also that. Going, going back to the characters as well, I would also advise against giving them the full spell lists to play off of. I would I would suggest that you... Yeah. That Your you, cleric like, has a certain spells he can cast, and that's the only spells he gets for that. I, I, don't, I don't get to refresh them at every rest or anything like that. Yeah. I would say that, that that's the limit that's of your point. abilities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. Well, all right, guys, it is uh, 808. Um, that was between the roles. I wanted to thank you all for uh, all the <coughs> help in the, uh, in the you know, campaign that I'll be. Uh, There's that directional mic, folks. Yep. Sorry, I wanted to thank you all very much for, uh, for help, <laughs> for all your help and all your advice. I really did. Uh, I, I hope you can hear me. I, I hope it's easy to hear me, and I'll be trying to buy a, a little closer mic to the as, microphone as, as soon as I possibly can. A little can. bit closer. <laughs> Ooh, I can smell the Don Julio from here. You need to get that checked. I think that might be a cavity. <laughs> might be. Might be. Well, thanks a lot, guys. We uh, appreciate it, and uh, thanks all of you for joining us. And we will be transitioning out in. And I am going to go home and have sex with my wife. <laughs>